Salesforce is one of the most special companies in the modern tech world. They built the fastest growing enterprise software company ever and definitely don't do things by the book. In this video, you'll learn about the crazy history of Salesforce with 10 facts that solidify them as one of the most unique companies in the software world. Let's start right at the beginning. When a young Mark Benioff, CEO and founder of Salesforce, worked at Oracle under Larry Ellison. In fact, Benioff became the youngest ever VP at Oracle at age 25, and by 27, he was already a millionaire. But Benioff wanted more, and when he came up with the idea for a cloud-based CRM called Salesforce, Larry Ellison supported his ideas, gave him a six-month sabbatical, invested $2 million into the idea, and joined its board of directors. Things took a sour turn when Benioff discovered Oracle was developing a competing CRM, and then removed Larry Ellison from the board. Benioff later quipped, I can say I'm the only person who has fired Larry Ellison. Since then, Benioff and Ellison have had a seemingly complicated relationship, with both showing great respect for one another but competing fearlessly at the same time. To make things even more interesting, Salesforce is a big customer of Oracle's. Back in 1999, when Mark Benioff founded Salesforce, cloud software was only starting to emerge, and the fact of handing your data over to someone else to manage was a far-fetched idea. But the concept for Salesforce came from Mark's six-month sabbatical, where he traveled to India and later Hawaii, where he discussed new ideas with entrepreneurs and friends. While swimming with dolphins in the Pacific Ocean, Mark Benioff asked himself, why aren't all enterprise software applications built like Amazon and eBay? And the idea was born. Amazon partly inspired the concept for Salesforce. Mark Benioff knew that business users accessing a CRM should be able to access it and browse it as easily as Amazon.com. But Amazon also partly inspired the user interface for Salesforce, with easy to access tabs across the top of the page. Salesforce has modeled their interface in a similar fashion, both on their older classic interface and newer lightning experience. Salesforce did actually experiment with tabs going down the left-hand side of the screen, but quickly went back to their original design. When Salesforce was founded back in 1999, they were the new kids on the block, competing against gigantic enterprises like Oracle and Siebel. But they were not only competing with huge existing companies, but also trying to convince business executives that the cloud was safe and this was the future, a truly mammoth task that requires some out-of-the-box thinking. So that's exactly what Salesforce went ahead and did. They hired fake protesters to stand outside the annual Siebel conference and protested against software. They shouted slogans such as, the internet is really neat, software where is obsolete. They even hired a fake TV crew to cover the event and interview members of the public. Siebel called the police, which gave the unknown brand of Salesforce a massive media buzz and the No Software logo was born. Siebel held another conference in Cairns, France. Benioff changed his tact for this event, and as most executives would fly into Nice and then take a taxi to Cairns, Salesforce hired all of the airport taxis. The 45-minute ride paid for by Salesforce gave them a chance to pitch Salesforce to these IT professionals, provided marketing material and lots of Salesforce logos in the cab. There was even a very sneaky marketing campaign against Oracle using a biplane that they sponsored. Salesforce created a marketing campaign of a modern fighter jet shooting shooting down the red biplane that looks very familiar with the end of software written across the ad, a reference to cloud computing disrupting legacy on-premise software. Zoho, a current competitor of Salesforce, tries to recreate some of this magic by attacking their annual Dreamforce conference in various ways, including hiring bikes with free rides for attendees and planes to write messages in the sky promoting Zoho. But to be blunt, I think this falls a bit flat, as I wouldn't call Zoho a disruptor, but I'm a bit biased. Salesforce has always been a company of principles, and back on Benioff's six-month sabbatical, he met a spiritual leader and humanitarian in India who helped strengthen his commitment to doing well in business. As a result, Mark and his co-founders baked in the 111 model into Salesforce. This model integrated philanthropy into the company and centers around contributing of 1% equity, 1% product, and 1% of employee hours given back to the community. Salesforce gives away huge amounts of grants, free licenses of their products to non-for-profits, and ensures that employees reserve a few days a year to volunteer their time. Since then, they've founded Pledge 1%, an initiative of corporate philanthropy that encourages companies around the world to adopt the 111 model. When you think of app stores, the Apple App Store might be the first one that pops into your head, but Salesforce actually released their own version, the App Exchange, in 2005, three years before the Apple version was released. Salesforce had originally planned to call the App Exchange the App Store and had trademarked the name before Benioff settled on the App Exchange instead. In an interview, Benioff admitted that he actually gave gifted the trademark name to Steve Jobs in 2008 as a show of gratitude for all the support over the years. The stage at the bottom, they said, I'm going to give you a gift. He goes, well, what gift can you give me? And I said, I'm going to give you the trademark for App Store 
and the URL for no charge because thank you for everything you've done for me. Salesforce is known for their ever expanding product suite. They started with sales CRM and now they have products that help customer support, marketing, commerce, analytics, and much more. Over the years, Salesforce have acquired very high profile companies and integrated them into their product suite. This now totals over $60 billion in acquisitions. Some of the highest profile acquisitions include Slack, Tableau, MuleSoft, and ExactTarget. Salesforce is a classic San Francisco startup story. Salesforce was not founded out of a garage like Apple, Microsoft, and so many other legendary companies, but a one bedroom apartment next to Mark Benioff's house. The three men who started working in this tiny office along with Mark were Parker Harris, Frank Dominguez, and Dave Mollenhoff. They were also accompanied by posts of the Dalai Lama, Albert Einstein and two dogs. Fast forward to today and Salesforce has planted its flag firmly in the map, naming various office blocks around the world Salesforce Towers. You have Salesforce Tower in London standing at 787 feet, Salesforce Tower in Chicago at 821 feet, and the granddaddy of all towers, the San Francisco Tower, standing at an eye-watering 1,070 feet. Each of these towers is usually equipped with an Ohana floor, a place to take clients and relax at the very top of each tower. 2003 was the birth of one of the most iconic parts of the Salesforce ecosystem. Prior to this, Salesforce had held many events around the country called City Tours, but this new event was called Dreamforce, and instead of lasting for a few hours, it lasted for a few days. The first Dreamforce was hosted in downtown San Francisco and had just over a thousand registered attendees. Fast forward to today, and at its peak before the pandemic, Dreamforce attendees would sit around 180,000 or more. Dreamforce literally shuts down San Francisco. Salesforce take over the gigantic Moscow Moscone Center in downtown San Fran and close Howard Street to create the Dreamforce Park, an outdoor area which includes trees, waterfalls, and areas to sit down and relax. I'm not exaggerating when I say every hotel room in the city is sold out, so much so that Salesforce had to hire a cruise liner one year to park up in the bay and provide extra hotel rooms. Throughout the week, Salesforce and its partners will throw parties in the evening where attendees can unwind and relax, and Salesforce holds Dreamfest, where they take over Oracle Stadium and have headliners such as The Killers, Fleetwood Mac, Green Day, and Metallica. Dreamforce is truly a bucket list item for all Salesforce professionals. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention one of the reasons I believe Salesforce has become so popular, and that's the community it's built around its products and the company. The Salesforce community refers to the professionals that work in the Salesforce ecosystem, and that is the developers, architects, sales managers, and admins that work at consultancies, app companies, and end users to keep the system running. I don't think I'm overstating myself when I say Salesforce has created one one of the most loyal followings for any B2B company ever. You could compare it with Apple and the relationship they've created with their loyal fan base. One of the reasons for this phenomenon is Salesforce have created jobs through its ecosystem for more than 15 million people, or trailblazers as Salesforce likes to call them. And a large proportion of these individuals will not be from tech backgrounds, but through Salesforce's low code platform that allows you to build with clicks and a drag and drop interface, individuals from non-traditional backgrounds can land high paying tech jobs in one of the most innovative ecosystems out there. This is one of the reasons why Salesforce has created such a loyal following, but it's also the emphasis Salesforce and its leadership team put on the community. They understand the value of the ecosystem and often thank, put on dedicated events and run programs such as Lightning Champions, Golden Hoodie Winners and the MVP program to show how much they value individual contributions from around the ecosystem. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new through these 10 crazy facts about the history of Salesforce and boy it sure has been a wild ride.